Now this is the slab that we're about to pour for Rod Boswell for the lunar environment dome and because we're looking for an extra strong slab we've got two layers of FE82 mesh that's 8 mil bar at 200 centers and we've got three 12 mil bars around the perimeter as a beam and we have put side lifters in here if we can come down a little bit closer and have a look at these these here are side lifter this uh, when this concrete slab is poured these rubber pads here form a void that enable a clutch to come to the outside of the slab and hook onto this pin um, and there are four of them equal distance apart all the way around the slab and it's 150 millimeters thick slab and we can lift the whole thing up and they're rated at two and a half tons each so we should in theory be able to lift 10 tons which is way more than we'll need to be lifting because it will probably be about six tons here i expect altogether by the time we finish this project with all the bits and pieces on it but as you can see it's a pretty heavy steel up slab and we have two stresses that we have to um, allow for here one is the vacuum stress, which is one going to suck the floor up. And that's why we've got two layers of steel. And, um, and then the lifting stresses, and which I'm less concerned about. I'm most concerned about that this floor doesn't just suck up in there when the chamber is decompressed. We didn't get concrete until one o'clock in the afternoon. And it's just firmed up enough now. And I've gone around with a hand trowel and got a pretty good finish on there for what we need anyway. And now, um, well, let me just explain what we've done here. Um, you can see we've got a center pin there because that's important for us to keep that center pin. And that is a bit of eight millimeter uh, basalt rebar, which we have pinned through the floor and we maintain our center point up there so that as we work up in the next phase of what we do we've still got that same center point to work from and that's also the center point that we ensure that we have a consistent radius around the slab former when we set it up and so this slab is 150 millimeters thick it's got two layers of F82 steel and it has a rebate around the top that you can see. Now we've put that in because this uh, particular dome is going to be under a vacuum inside. So we've created that channel there too. So it also creates some extra resistance to the suction. And we'll be going around that channel and drilling and chem setting uh, starters. And we have quite a, a few uh, holes to drill in there. So uh, just coming back to this formwork, what we've done, you can see there's ribs. There's two outer ribs. So we've cut that to the radius of uh, 1.5, uh, <coughs> less the thickness of the form ply that we use, or the plywood that we're using there to form, that's fixed to those rails. So um, as a matter of, so in this case we've used seven millimeter ply so with those rails cut round at that radius and the seven mil ply fixed onto it and then all locked together like that we it forms a perfect one and a half meter radius all the way around we have a perfect circle it's as simple as that it takes a little bit of time to trace out the radius and those ribs there are cut from a 16 or 18 18 millimeter form ply which you can get pretty well at any builder supply. Okay. And um, 
uh, it will um, cure nice and slowly tonight. Okay, so what we're doing now is uh, we're fixing, we just cut to length the aluminium angle that you can see down there and that's a 50 by 50 by 5 mil thick aluminium angle that we've had rolled to the radius um, so that it sits in 100 millimeters from the edge of the slab and then what we're going to do is once this is fixed down onto the slab onto this edge here we will pull over the air former and then we fix the strapping over it to keep it locked in to the edge and we're going to do a test inflation this afternoon. Now there is <clears throat> what we're looking at there now is we have this a center pole a steel center pole which is an adjustable center pole the part of the pole at the top is uh, 41 millimeters diameter outside and it slides into a larger pipe underneath that we have bolted down to the slab and the top thinner pipe slides down through the, the thicker pipe underneath so that we can adjust the height of that pole and this is just before inflation and what we've done is we've fixed down the aluminium angle the 50 by 50 by 5 millimeter aluminium angle all the way around the edge of the slab and we've erected the pole in the center and we've taken the air form and where we have created the holes at the apex of the air form where we've glued some rubber some three millimeters rubber <clears throat> either side of the hole on the air form to reinforce it is threaded down over that pole and it's just sitting there and we've gone around the base of the air form and pulled it down over the angle. Now to hold the air form down on that angle we get some galvanized strapping. Now this stuff already comes with holes in it and we have fixed through the strapping and through the air form and into the aluminium angle with some self-tapping screws and we've done this all the way around. And Let's fix that down around the perimeter. We'll find out in a minute whether it leaks when we do a test inflate. Now this is the sock that we have, which is uh, fabricated into the air form. This particular sock is, uh, when it's inflated, is about a 400 millimeter diameter so that a, a person can get through because we will eventually have to get in there. And um, that will... Okay, what I want to show you here is a little detail which is on the bottom of the air form. You can see these two ropes coming out here. These are just the excess rope. It's about a, um, a 12 millimeter diameter rope, which is welded into the bottom of the air form to allow this some, you know, significant hold down by putting this band of steel around there. This holds it down and helps seal it to the, to the edge. So we are on the slab edge, we're 150 millimeters thick slab overall. This is a 100 mil wide rebate in there where the wall will be, will be built. And this is the L4. Now, before too long, we'll get some tape and we'll tape over the top of this whole section all the way around to cover these um, batten head with well, these uh, driver heads here and also to uh, prevent concrete going down into the corner because eventually when we've constructed this we're going to get back inside and we have to remove this air form and the way that we'll do it is we'll get back inside remove the screws from the angle that are fixed down on the concrete and pull it away and then we can remove these screws here but we want, we want to make sure that they're not embedded in concrete and that's why we'll put a nice thick tape across there uh, to stop the concrete locking all that in. All right we're looking down on top of the pole where the air form uh, comes over the top of the pole you can see this is a little bit wobbly um, 
which is, allows, although it's bolted to the slab below, it allows this just to move around a little bit and find its um, most natural plumb position with the airform. So what we've got here at the apex of the airform, we've drilled a hole, a 42 mil hole for the pipe. We cut two discs out of rubber. This is pure rubber, good quality rubber. It's about three mil thick. And we've glued this using contact glue on the inside and the outside of the airform. And we've drilled a smaller hole, about a 35 mil hole in here so that it has a very tight fit over the top of this pipe and that we're hoping this is going to completely seal here. Now, looking up a little bit, we've got a disc. This uh, plywood disc, it's about 120 millimeters diameter, and you can see that it's got chamfered edges because this is going to sit on top of the airform up there and it's going to create, this is designed to create a flat seat, a flat, spa a flat surface up underneath the inside of what will be the concrete dome to allow the sealing of a flange. This will create a flange sealing plate for the pipe that will be inserted on in the top. It will be used for pumping down the vacuum in the dome. What you see leaning up against the wall are two polycarbonate windows. And uh, they are 25 millimeters thick. And one of those will be on the dome as a viewing port from outside. The two windows have got a huge flange around them that will sit into a seat that we'll cast into the side of the dome. The disc that you see in front of it, um, actually that's also a polycarbonate and that's a flat disc sheet that we use on the other small domes that we make to cover the, uh, the central skylight. The uh, yellow and black machine on the floor over there on the left is our fan blower. That's the machine that will inflate the, the air former that we're going to use to construct this dome. What this is, is a manway pressure door. And this is going to be cast into the dome. And this will be the means of access to the inside of the dome when it's not under any vacuum, of course. But this door is designed to resist the forces that will be imposed on it when it's sucked down. And it's from uh, Fratelli Laveghi, I think that's my, about as good as I can get with my Italian pronunciation. Anyway, this is it in its raw form. Now you can see this is quite some serious door and um, the, the steel here is about 10 millimeters thick. And the door, I guess is about two and a half millimeters thick. And it has these wind down clamps. There's these clamps here. It's good for um, one atmosphere and there is a seal, quite a tough rubber or silicon seal. And it's not quite set up for what we need uh, to install it. This is designed to be welded into a stainless steel tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to weld the flange just under this bolt point here all the way around uh, a 50 mil flange that will enable us to create a seat and seal against the dome. This one is just going to the stainless steel welder now and uh, because he's got the flanges there now that have been uh, cut out by a laser cutter. Okay so this is the um, block out and template that uh, will form up the opening for the pressure door and so um, this plate with all the holes in is an exact replica of the a flange that sits around the frame of the door and the holes are drilled there because we're going to inset stainless steel bolts into the concrete and this form will temporarily form will will be temporarily held in place and uh, create the opening and uh, once it's removed there will be a flat plate all the way around a flat surface all the way around the concrete which the door then will sit up against with a rubber seal and uh, those bolt holes will come out and 
the whole face plate will, will be bolted on. Just have a look how we've made this and Russ made this. So we've got um, here uh, some 4 mil ply um, which has been cut through about halfway through the back so that we can make make this curve here. This is plywood and this will be oiled so that the concrete doesn't stick to it and come out easy. Okay now what we're looking at here is the block out and the former uh, which Russ has made uh, to take the this uh, polycarbonate window which has been specially made. It's made out of 25 millimeters thick polycarbonate. As you can see, it's really thick. And they've created this little bubble window, which is gonna sit up against the dome, which will be a viewing window from inside. And it's designed to um, withstand a huge amount of pressure. And this former has been made exactly the same way as the other one there for the manway door. And this will be supported in place up against the dome and will create that opening it will create this uh, flat plate here for this flange to be bolted to. And this is just being temporarily held here at the moment with these pilot holes in place. And um, Russ is just going to drill those through now to accept a 12 mil bolt. Good. 